And this is it's all good, man. The better, better call salt podcast. My name is Brian, and with me, as always, is voluptuous Dave. Voluptuous Dave, how are you doing today? Uh, to quote Stained, it's been a while. <laughs> Dave and I also host the Nothing Important Podcast. You can find that at www.nothingimportantpodcast.com, where Dave and I talk to people who are more successful and famous than we will ever be. Uh, I've had some great guests on as of late. We've had uh, Charlie Koontz from Community. Uh, we had uh, Josiah Johnson, who is the co-creator and uh, main voice actor of uh, the Legends of Chamberlain Heights on Comedy Central. So it's been it's been a lineup of great guests, and we have plenty of great guests. You can find that on iTunes as well. So Dave, this is a big one for us today. Way to pick it up yeah. and run with it, Dave. <laughs> That's that's me trying to maintain my inner excitement because yes, it's a kind yeah, of a big deal absolutely. For us today. So, uh, in case you're wondering, in about five minutes, uh, Michael McKean is going to give a call to our very podcast, which is a huge deal because obviously he plays Chuck McGill on uh, Better Call Saul, and mm-hmm. it's taken seriously about a year for me to set this interview up. Has been a while. Remember, guy. It has, and, and I remember uh, when we did our first interview with Ray Seahorn. Uh, you and I were, you know, said, "Well, we should make it the goal, you know, uh, Bob Odenkirk and Chuck, and and you know, make it those guys." But uh, up until this very podcast, you know, th- those are some very uh, prolific and busy folks. And uh, last night, I get an email right. from his agent where it's finally going to happen, and he's just like, "This time tomorrow, go." And then. <laughs> I was texting. I was texting you late at night. I'm like, please tell me you can make this happen. I'm going to take my work uh, break early, and I'm going to sneak into an office at work and and make it happen. So I'm I'm super excited that he's finally calling in. Uh, we'll chat with him for about 15 minutes. And this is uh, Dave and I's kind of um, you know happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas gift to all of you, the listeners. To it's all good, man. Um, during the off season, Dave and I kind of pride ourselves as we're probably the only Better Call Saul podcast that that keeps things rolling. And at least once a month, we have some sort of interview for uh, for you guys. You know, somebody who's involved some way with uh, Better Call Saul. And you guys, top three you guys want is obviously Bob Odenkirk, mm-hmm. um, Jonathan Banks, mm-hmm. and Michael McKean, mm-hmm. and. And uh, we, we've just been pressing and pressing for it, and uh, eventually my letters have made their way up the chain, and it looks like in just a few moments it's going to happen. So I'm super excited. And uh, Dave and I uh, just want to thank everybody out there who listens to us. Um, thank you for making it happen for us and listening to us and giving Dave and I opportunities to do some fun and cool things that we probably never thought we'd do. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, especially since we kind of unofficially, officially – announced that this is the third season we're starting to make all of our third season appropriate graphics and stuff and this is a hell of a way to kick off the third season let me tell you what boy (laughs) absolutely so and you know hopefully uh because by now i mean looking at the guest list that we've had from better call saul by now uh vince Bob, all those people have at least had to hear of us at least once. I would think so. I would hope so. Right. So we're getting the little earworms out there. So <laughs> so uh, this is uh, just another step in the journey. And, um, and Dave and I are going to keep, keep pressing forward. So I, I'm super excited about this. Me too. Absolutely. <laughs> I can hardly contain my excitement. <laughs> It's Michael McKean. Hey, Michael. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good for morning to you guys. That sounded a lot less enthusiastic than it will after Dave puts the cool, like, crowd clapping noise sound effect in, in the post. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Yeah, good. Oh, well, nice to be appreciated, even if it's artificially. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Uh, Michael, thank you so much uh, for calling in to our podcast. We uh, we started our podcast a few months before before Better Call Saul came out. We were kind of one of the first ones uh, to be a Better Call Saul podcast. And almost immediately, people started peppering us with requests to uh, get certain folks on the show. And uh, you are obviously one of the highest requests. So we're absolutely honored. And our fans, thank you for coming on and chatting with us. Well, thanks very much. Now, How can I help? What can I tell you? What can I help you with? <laughs> Well, I, I guess uh, uh, from my perspective, I'm on my way into work today. I was I uh, was kind of uh, you know trying to do some due diligence and look up, and I I realized that I have actually been watching you my entire life. Uh, first with uh, as uh, you know uh, Laverne and Shirley reruns on Nick at Night, and I had a college roommate named Dan who's super excited that you're chatting with us today, and he's uh would watch Spinal Tap several times a week <laughs> when I roomed with him in college, and then now. You know, as Chuck, I'm Better Call Saul and uh, calling into our podcast. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's an absolute honor, and I, I've been with you for uh, quite a long time, and it's great to chat with you. Okay. So, uh, I don't know how to respond to that except to, 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 to thank you very much. I didn't listen, know you were out there, but I, I would have taken the jobs anyway. <laughs> that way. I, I'd like to say that I did it all for you, but it just wouldn't be the truth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, you, you, have, you have what you have. You have the kind of career that you have. And, you know, you try and do things that are interesting to you and you try and keep busy and, uh, you know, and not, uh, not, not break your neck to get something that's not going to be good. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been fun. Awesome. So, uh, you play Chuck McGill on uh, better call Saul. And what I love about the character is, uh, you know, there's characters, people love to hate, like that's kind of, you know, they love to hate that guy, but, uh, Chuck, even though he he's kind of hated by a lot of fans, he, those same fans also find him very endearing. And well, he should be sympathetic. I think because, because I, I think that every character should be approached sympathetically, uh, regardless of what your end result is uh, supposed to be. I think that you have to, your, your character has to believe in himself to some extent. And to do that, you have to, you have to kind of learn where his heart is. Um, you know, and if, if, if a character is only antagonistic, if it falls into the way, if it, you know, if it gets in the way of your protagonist. So if you're following the hero and the, the antagonist is getting in your way, then you're going to have negative feelings about him. But that doesn't mean he hasn't he has negative feelings about himself necessarily, although that mm -hmm. can certainly be a driving factor. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I, I, I Helen Mirren once said that uh, said, you know, when I have to play somebody who's really awful, I try and create something in their past that would turn me that that way, that would make it, hmm. you know, that would make my behavior appropriate. And so that I can believe in it and do it like it's, uh, you know, like it's a, a, a goal that's a good goal anyway. Right. And, you know, and Dave and I, uh, you know, we, we often talk about how, you know, there's this kind of uh, cat and mouse between Jimmy and Chuck, you know, it's very Tom and Jerry and the fact that they're totally, you know, kind of try to get, you know, one up each other. But at the same time, there's actually a real. Uh, affection towards them and i think it really comes through in your performance and every time something happens where everybody's like oh man what a what a jerk then there's like another layer to it where everybody's like oh you know chuck ain't that bad maybe yeah. he's just a victim of his circumstance <laughs> well he is he is the uh the purveyor of his own circumstance to a great extent but he's also you know he's sick you know and, right. and uh I, i'm i'm automatically sympathetic to, or at least uh, tentatively sympathetic toward people who are actually suffering. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I think you're going to learn a lot more about that uh, this coming season. We're uh, they're just shooting 307 now, and we're going to do 10 all together like we always do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've been watching to you. What we've been shooting has been very exciting, and I think you'll. I think you'll all be happy with where it goes. Not that you'll hear it from me. <laughs> You're just going to have to be there and experience it as we do. We don't even know what's going to happen, you know, 
two, three weeks before we shoot it, we still don't know where this, where things are necessarily going or I don't anyway. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of, um, a lot of the folks that we talked to from the show, you know, mentioned the, you know, how you're kind of left in the dark. And a lot of times you kind of find out what happens as you watch, as, as you watch the show at home or like a print of the show afterwards, which I, f- I find fascinating because those of us in, not in the business, you know, we just think like, Oh, well they must just get every script and then they can see where the hell is going. Well, we do, we do. And we, we read it, but you know, on the page, you're kind of reading it. I'm, it's like, I'm reading a novel, uh, that, uh, about the people who are in the scenes that I'm not in. Cause you know, if you're in a scene, you shoot the scene, you spend days and days on end, you know, doing your part of the, of the story, but the rest of it's just printed page. Unless you go and watch, you know, and you observe other people at work, you know, right. uh, which I don't, I don't do unless I'm really in the mood to hang out, but it's <laughs> sort of like, you know, it's like, it, it's, uh, it's enough to be on the set when I'm needed. And I just feel like I'm an extra, an extra piece of equipment, you know, uh, if, if I'm just sitting on the sideline, <laughs> but, uh, but, and yet, you know, and I see it all assembled, of course, you know, I, I don't have any say in, in how the, how things are put together. Uh, thank God the people who are in charge of such things are brilliant at it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've just, once it hits the air, it's sort of like, wow, not only do I now get the whole picture and follow the story like everyone else at home is. Now I see just how uh, amazingly talented our, our people are. And, uh, you know, that goes from, from the, you know, the directors through the, 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 uh, the entire, uh, camera crew to you know, wardrobe and makeup and hair and, and, uh, the cutters, my God, the editors and the sound people, mm-hmm. sound recording and editing on the show is just, it's as good as it gets. And it's just, a, a, it's a thrill to have it in those kind of, in that kind of hands, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and of course, starting at the writing table with some real heavyweights and, uh, you know, we're just, it, we're kind of, we got a lot going for us. A- absolutely. And now that you're going into the third season and you're, you're filming the third season has, has watching the previous two season or maybe reviewing the previous two season, has that, uh, affected how you see your character and uh your his motivations as such going forward um yeah to a certain extent i i i don't i never watched an episode well really, it's not true i watched a pilot <laughs> episode more than once but it, that's the only time i've watched an episode more than once it's just you know i like to see them when they're on the air when everything it's too late <laughs> and uh, and then and then kind of just know that yeah, that happened, and I kind of lock it away. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't go back and review. Certainly, um, you know, I'm, I'm following. The, so far, this is a three-year movie that I've been shooting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one story. It starts from, you know, at discounting the, the flashbacks, which happen occasionally. Right. It, it's a story that started uh, at, at a certain point, and that's what we're shooting. We're shooting a great big long movie. And, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to do it that way, but, uh, <clears throat> I think I learn a lot more from doing the scenes than I do from ever looking at them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's totally. like, I, because I, I, I'm stuck as a human being and he's, he is made up of what he has done, not what he has seen himself do. So, uh, I, I, you know, I think the kind of, kind of that, that, I think in that sense, the past shapes the future. So, uh, you know, we'll see. You mentioned uh, time jumps, which is something that Better Call Saul does uh, quite quite a fair amount of. And we were worried it was going to be confusing when we heard about that. But it, it's not at all. Uh, do you think there will ever be a uh, a time where Chuck might be in one of the present day, I guess, flash forwards where we see, you know, Jimmy as the manager of a Cinnabon? We don't know. I <laughs> I Brian, don't know. That's, that's too much like, detail, you know, Brian. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there are so many, boy, just in the last three shows, I happen to know that there are a few, a few uh, events that make such questions completely uh, academic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I have a question I'm not sure that you can sure. answer, um, but I have always been curious because there's a lot of the, uh, is Chuck's illness psychosomatic or is it real? So I'm wondering, Michael McKean, as an actor playing him, what is it to you? Is it psychosomatic? 
Is it actual, or can you even answer that question? Um, I can answer that question. I don't <laughs> think it, it's that vital, you know, and uh, I think that there are moments when uh, it, the balance seems to go in one direction more than another, where it seems like there might be an element of uh, of uh, psychosomatic uh, uh, psychosis even. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just know as an actor, I've always made it real mm-hmm. because it's just, it's kind of, it's what Chuck is really feeling. It's, he's not faking it. We've seen him all alone. And not just saying, well, I can knock this bullshit off because, you know, there's nobody watching. Right. It's not, that's not the case. He really is suffering. So uh, that's, I have had no choice but to play it that way, um, which is to say, even if it was psychosomatic, I would still be playing it as though I were really feeling it, et cetera. So, you know, in a sense, my answer is, my answer is uh, irrelevant uh, <laughs> to the story. The right. story is going to happen and it's going to be what it is. Uh, you know, it's, I, I think that there's a certain thing about suffering and about being a part because of your suffering, especially is that it, it affects your mind and your heart. And if you, you can, it, it's much like saying, well, that's it. I'm through with games and locking yourself in your apartment. And you, you know, you're, 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 you're never going to try and have a relationship again. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a legitimate kind of it's staking a claim on your future that you don't really have. <laughs> so, you know, if, if that's, it, it, you know, in a sense that there's a, there's that place where emotion and, you know, and, and disease kind of intersect yeah. and one can serve the other. It's, it's complicated and I can't pretend to know it because I, I just have suspicions about what the story really amounts to, what Chuck's story really amounts to. Mm-hmm. And I'm just blue skying it at this point. But I think it's always, I've always found that interesting that, that to suffer from some, from a disease is very similar to suffering from another kind of lonely, from, from loneliness that is about something other than being a part because of the disease. So, there you go. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and you, you do a, a great job of playing it. Like, you know, to even have those questions come up to where it's, it's uh, not certain what's really going on. But as long as it's real to Chuck, then it's real to us. And I think that comes across quite well. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Well, uh, Michael, we won't keep you too much longer because I'm sure you have better things to do than chat with us today. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go see Rogue One. Nice, nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. My wife is, my wife is working. Uh, she's rehearsing a new play, and I'm, I'm in New York. Uh, you know, and I, I, I got some free days here. So I'm going to go to see the movies that she's not dying to see. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then like that. So, well, awesome. I- enjoy the movie. Thank you so much for uh, calling into it. Saw good man, and uh, yo, best of luck with uh, season three and beyond. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank Mike. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dave, that was Michael McKeon, man. Chuck uh, McGill from Better Call Saul. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. That was so awesome. <laughs> it was, how I, I, I kind of got nervous. Is, I got nervous. How insightful is that guy? I know, right? Is, is he still on the line? <laughs> no, he's not. He hung up. <laughs> okay. If he is, he can feel free to chime in at any time here. But I, I think he's uh, he's in a hurry to go see uh, the new Star Wars movie, yeah. which, which is nice. No, that yeah, that was that was very cool. Was, that was great for him to come on and humor us and humor the fans because, um, that's what everybody seems to be about over there at the old <laughs> Better Call Saul. We didn't really get into the the usual questions we've asked everybody about the audition process and how we found out he got the gig. I was thinking about that. Totally, totally. I I just uh you know I wanted to be uh, respectful of his time and right. You know you know I. Uh, this is one of the few interviews where I actually prepped uh, some questions, but listen to him speak, you know, would take me in, in different avenues and such. And then I just kind of went with the old, like, I'm just talking off the top of my head. So, That's why it's bullshit uh, to prepare. Yeah. <laughs> actually, the one the one question that I wanted to ask him was um, uh, in, in doing research, waiting for him to call in and stuff like that. He was on a Letterman interview uh, yeah. in 1991. 
Yeah. And he had a really phenomenal mustache. And I wanted to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to congratulate him on his mustache from like 20 years ago, <laughs> or however many it is. But um, I was I was told by a few people to ask him Spinal Tap questions. And I was like, well, this isn't a Spinal Tap podcast. Um, yeah. You it's know, it's like, his most iconic movie in, in our peer group. You know, that's what we right, all know right. the most of. But that, and uh, I really wanted to mention the Ed Begley Jr. thing, the glowing compliments that Ed Begley Jr. had for Michael McKean. Oh, but, yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Well, oh well. you know, uh, yeah. You I know, just like, said it knows, now, maybe. so if he listens back, he'll hear it. Michael, yeah, maybe, Ed Begley maybe Jr. A- had awesome things to say about you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe in a few years we can get him on the phone again. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, absolutely awesome of of him to call in and uh seemed like a really really stellar dude and we look forward to seeing him in season 3. Absolutely. I'm curious I'm, as to I'm, Absolutely. Well, uh everybody out there listening, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all that good stuff. Uh thank you for uh allowing Dave and I the opportunity to speak to people like Michael McKean. And I hope you enjoyed our chat with Michael as much as we did. Uh, I don't typically get nervous or excited when I talk to to folks, but that was, that was one where like uh, I was kind of hanging on his every word, you know, yeah. like uh, just, I was really surprised. Like I really have been watching the dude, you know, since the days of, of Nick at night. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And I, I didn't realize it till today on the train on my way to work. So, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Just overall, uh, great chatting with him. So I think where we go from here is uh, Dave and I are, I think tonight we're going to record an episode of Nothing Important. And uh, we're going to record an episode of Nothing Important. And then we're going to take a break for the holidays. We'll be back in January. Uh, there's not a solid date for season three of better call Saul to start, but it's definitely going to happen in February, 2017 from what I've heard. Um, so hopefully this year too, we have new AMC reps, uh, a couple of nice women. So hopefully, uh, we can get some of the, some of the goodies that we got last year as far as t-shirts and such, and we could pass on to you guys. Uh, that was, that was a total pleasure for Dave and I to be able to do that for you folks last year. Uh-huh. And, um, and then when February rolls around, you know, you know us, at, at least a couple of weeks before uh, the premiere episode of the season, Dave and I will start knocking out It's All Good Men interviews. Uh, also, you know, please keep checking out the Nothing Important podcast. Dave and I have a bunch of really kick-ass people uh, in line, or at least I'm in contact with their agents, but I'm hesitant to say any of their names because those people are so busy and actually make a lot of money doing what they do. So we're kind of like last on the totem pole, so, <laughs> but yeah. rest assured, um, rest assured we're going to have some big names in the, in the upcoming year. And of course, uh, just the, uh, the awesome people doing awesome things that we were able to chat with over the last two years, uh, year three and nothing important is going to be a big deal. And uh, season three of Better Call Saul is, is going to be a fun one. Man, I hope so, because it's been a fun ride so far. Absolutely. So, uh, once again, please feel free to review us on iTunes. Tell everyone you can about the shows. Hit us up on Twitter, uh, Facebook, all that good stuff. You can find us at itsallgoodmen.com. You can find us at nothingimportantpodcast.com. Have wonderful holidays, and we are going to see you in 2017. Dave? Call us idiots, call us geniuses, whatever. Just call us. It's all good, man. Hey, it's all good, man.